after eight years of continuous evolution, Quick is finally a standard. It's approved. It has a number and all. It has an RFC number. Get this. It's a sexy number. 9,000. Give me an RFC that has like the beautiful number like this. None. It's finally a standard. Let's discuss. Welcome to the Backend Engineering Show with your host, Hussein Nasser. And uh, Quick, which I don't think it's an acronym for anything, <laughs> right? But, but people try. It's the protocol that Google has invented to solve limitations of HTTP2. And obviously, there is no long video enough to talk about the history about all the stuff I made many many videos about the history about this i talked about http i talked about http 1.0 i talked about http 1.1 and http 2 i'm gonna link up the playlist for http check it out if you want to learn more the history the history is very very critical because guess what we don't solve problems for the sake of solving problems we don't invent stuff for the sake of inventing stuff we solve problems that exist right and that's what quick was for and eight years Google came up with a quick protocol, which is an implementation of this multiplexed way. When the client needs to send so many requests and a single TCP connection cannot be used as its raw form to multiplex stuff. We tried with HTTP2, we failed. HTTP2 locks up, heads offline blocking, and, and there's an additional stuff that we don't really... Uh, we can't get our get our with which is the TCP handshake itself, and then we have to secure a TLS, and there's the the protocol ossification boxes in the middle started messing with our packets with HTTP two, so it's a mess. It's a mess. So we wanted a way to be more efficient. And that's what Google invented. They invented the the quick protocol, right? It was their own version. Cloudflare tried to contribute. Microsoft chipped in. Everybody chipped in to make the protocol better. There was like so many. Facebook is now, I think, a completely on Quick on their back end. I talked about that. Uh, if you want to ch check out the video, Facebook completely moved to Quick internally, right? They've seen they seen good improvement. Not not great. Good. Right. There was so many drafts. Google started to do their own thing. The the IETF started to do their own thing, and they finally converged into one final version. Right now, you can turn on HTTP three, which is running on top of Quick, if you want to, and uh, you can uh, enjoy this new protocol. How about we jump into this article and discuss? All right, let's read this from the register. TCP alternative Quick reaches IETF standards track after eight years of evolution. Google spawned it, Cloudflare backed it, Microsoft made its own cut, and Boffins worry it didn't improve privacy. Well, let's, let's check. All right, let's read this blurb and then discuss a little bit more. Quick, UDP internet connections. <laughs> Is that what it stands for? I don't think, because Google did say that it doesn't stand for anything. It's just quick, right? Uh, have uh, graduated to Internet Engineering Task for Standard Track. The quick spec, we're going to uh, open it up in a minute, RFC 9000 appeared on May 27th, so a few days ago, making the end of the beginning for a story that started in 2013 when Google revealed it was playing with Quick, which it then described as an early stage network protocol we are experimenting with, which runs a stream multiplexing protocol over the new flavor of transport layer security on top of UDP. The beauty here is we only had the concept of TCP for reliable connection. And we have the other option of a layer 4 transport, which is UDP, which is not reliable. So people start building stuff on top of TCP. But guess what? When you are at the application level, you want to, you have your own rules. You have your own guarantees. And TCP started getting in the way of this. Because it just deals at the packet by packet basis, and it has its own handshake. And now, on top of that, we hope we have to secure things because we're on the encrypted world. We don't want any anyone to snoop, so we invented TLS. So we have to do the handshake, so three way handshake of TCP. And then on top of that, we always had to do this TLS, right? So TLS 1.2, we had uh, almost two round trips, 
to exchange the symmetry key. And then TS 1.3, we made it into one. We even cut it down into zero round trip, zero RTT with TLS 1.3, improved edition, uh, with this idea of having to send the data if I did talk to you before, the pre shared key concept but even that there is so much stuff that we have to do to get to sharing the actual content quick what google built originally they said okay how about if i moved the guarantees of the tcp handshake and the connection reliability and the packet delivery up at the application level not really application just higher level and use udp so i'm gonna do a handshake to, to establish the sequences, the number of sequences and, and the packet numbering and all that stuff. And in the same virtual handshake, not logical handshake that I'm building on top of UDP, I'm gonna do TLS. So two in one, beautiful, beautiful. How this is just genius, right? And that's just the idea of that really solves a lot of time. So let's, let's continue reading. Quick's best trick is to allow a client and server to exchange data with less overhead, as I discussed it earlier. Cutting off the extra round trip established to, uh, to, uh, needed to establish the TCP link means less traffic and faster connection. So you don't need to, to do the TCP handshake. Well, you're doing a handshake with, with Quick, but we're moving two handshake in one, the encryption and the actual TCP handshake. That's especially welcome on wireless network, yeah, less overhead, which are nearly always shared and see contention for resources. Just in case you haven't noticed, there are 3 billion wireless devices. Okay, 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 we know. Connect connectivity greasing company Cloudflare link quick so much it's offered it as a service. We know uh, Cloudflare has been pushing quick for a very long time. I've been covering this news on my channel here. Quick has been really a pioneer right when it comes to quick they just did so much stuff with quick google already baked quick into the chrome browser long time ago i mean i even showed uh, in my my uh, in my analysis videos that when we go through the tools we see this q3 uh, protocol that is it's google own version of draft right now they are hopefully they get to move to the actual standard rfc version but Quick has not been widely adopted elsewhere. A Cloudflare post celebrating Quick ascension to the standard it says it can detect around 12% of the internet using Quick with HTTP3. And if you go, if you're using iPhone, that's if you're using iPhone and you go to Safari option settings, you're gonna see that HTTP3 is turned off by default. I don't know. So people are still skeptical. They want it, maybe they want things to be standardized before uh, because. You know the bugs that comes up from the http 3 and all that stuff they want they want things to be stable before moving all right so guys so this is the actual rfc rfc 9000 request for command 9000 as you can see and one one thing that uh, is really a sell point for quick uh there's been a lot of people talking about is the ability for seamless underlining connection media switching so that means if you're using Quick, theoretically again, if you are on a wireless network on your home and you drive out for your garage, because that happens to me all the time, and then all of a sudden you switch to a 4G network, what happens here is obviously your IP address change, your local port change, your destination still doesn't change because you're connected to the same server technically, right? Well, not technically because you're through load balancers and all that stuff you might hit another server but now that you have to retry that connection again right we don't need to see we don't need to see the rfc anymore because why well, i'm going to discuss this and going to end the video but yeah if you drive out of the garage you're going to change your ip address you're going to change your port and as a result the connection is be dropped right you have to you your old connection the server eventually is going to give up because they say oh there's no uh there is no pings coming from that connection it must be have been disconnected so i'm gonna send the reset and now you're coming in through a brand new connection here with a new ip address and now trying to establish a new connection so that you have to take the hit in the older design with tcp you have to take the hit to do the handshake again to do the tls again with quick they have like a bit in the packets itself 
It's called connection ID, which keeps track of that connection. So the there is a logical connection that is keep being keep track. So it's, it's still it's a stateful thing, but it's being sent with every packet. So now, if you want to reestablish as a smart client, as a smart quick client, you can reestablish, reconnect with the 4G connection on on the connection ID. So asking the server to re just just hey, you know me, I'm still same OG, but I've been low key let's connect again let's not do this stupid handshake you know me right so now the if the server receives that connection id renegotiation whatever it's called it will just resume where it, it will pick up where it's left off that's even so powerful but what people miss here is that is not easy to implement right because like think about it connection ids where where do you store this connection id the implementation is has to be stateful you start in the server memory so if i came in into a 4g connection with a different ip address and i and i did send a connection id first of all what is the guarantee that the load balancer will eventually funnel my packets all the way to that server that has my connection id there are no guarantees so you are responsible to build the guarantees so you can build a sticky session all the way to that server if based on the connection id and here's the thing i don't know is that connection id bit encrypted i'm gonna say absolutely i think yes if it's not encrypted then i can do this solution if it is encrypted there is no way unless you terminate the quick tls encryption in the load balancer and look at the connection id right you can't do it so there is other ways like okay the rfc i read the rfc a bit the ways so you know what let's share the rfc uh again <laughs> reading through that because that's that's part so yeah i was interested in that part so i searched connection id and uh, behold someone essentially people those people are smart so I, they thought about this and look at this consideration for simple load balancers because like uh, how does that work how do you do connection migration in uh in, in load balancers that's very very interesting right so i started reading through this thing and I don't know if I'm convinced with these solutions, to be honest. One solution says, okay, a server could use an out-of-band mechanism to forward packets to the correct server. So if that, if another server receives that connection migration with the connection ID, another server, that server is responsible to send it to the actual server. So you need to have an out-of-band, like a database to store the connection ID on the server, <laughs> which is, I don't know about that. You can, you can do that. It's not, it's not difficult, I guess. But then the servers have to talk to each other, things that you don't normally have to do. I mean, you can have a message queue in the middle to talk to a broker, something like that. The other solution is that if the server can use a dedicated server IP port, address or port, other than the one that the client initially connects to, they can use the preferred address transport parameter to request that the client move connections to that dedicated address so you have a dedicated address and make sure that assuming that dedicated address is not a load balancer or an api gateway that just funnels you randomly to another server right it has you, this this other bullet i believe is a way to do okay let's make let's make a way a sticky session kind of a solution where make sure hey it's always connect to me right all right guys but this is i'm so excited i am so pumped for this news this is excellent news i hope people start moving their implementation to to quick and see what's wrong with that right obviously uh people are concerned with security and i understand that as well uh, because this this idea of connection migration is scary imagine someone just sending a connection migration without any credentials or anything and that you can, can just resume a connection if i can guess a connection id can i be able to resume it right if i can guess maybe an ip address or a port if i know this information can i just resume it from somewhere else i i'm pretty sure people thought about it the, the smart people at, at quick and the Inter engineering task force thought about it but i'm just interested about this stuff what do you guys think about this news i'm gonna see you on the next one you guys stay awesome goodbye odiska